Hi guys, hope everyone's well out there today and welcome to another video about the Kemper. If you enjoy this video or any of my other content I'm putting out, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a great deal when making other videos. It's uh, currently the hottest day I've experienced in some time over here in England. So I've even treated myself to a beer and uh, got my beat shirt out. <laughs> Just want to say a very quick thanks to the guys over at the KPA Chem Profiling App user group on Facebook. Uh, the feedback to my last video has been great and especially for a video I just put together to keep myself amused during lockdown. Uh, I really, really appreciate the kind words and the questions I've been getting. Also a quick shout out to Matt Fig who sent me over some profiles following that last video and that tone that you heard in the intro is part of his Kemper 4.0 pack. So check that out if you get a chance. Um, I've just modified it so I can show off the morphing. So today I want to cover morphing in the Kemper, uh, what it is, um, how to set it up and some practical applications for it. I think a lot of people know it's there and maybe use it a little bit but I think if you take a deep dive there's actually a lot of fun that can be had with it and it's also very practical for live use or some special effects in the studio. So what is morphing? Basically, for those not in the know, it's essentially a second set of settings within a preset. And it's as simple to set up as if you've got your camper normally and you've done all your settings, all you do is press or hold down the um, preset button that you're currently on and it will take you to the second layer of sounds. You make your changes and then it's saved automatically as long as you save the preset. Now it can morph over a period of time or instantly, but we'll get into that when it comes to setting it up. You can also do this with an expression pedal in real time. So you can go between the two layers of settings, but they will change in real time with the expression pedal. So there's some cool sounds to be had from doing that as well. Just a very quick addendum here. Anyone that doesn't own a profiling remote and wants to check some of this out, there's two switch jacks here in the back of the Kemper. All you need to do is put in a momentary foot switch or an expression pedal and it will work exactly the same as it does on the remote. You just have to assign it in the uh, system menu. So why not just use another preset? Well, in a basic level, you can just use the morphing as extra sounds within a bank. So you've got your five presets. You can essentially have 10 preset sounds if you wanted to. But if you look into it and get a bit creative, there's a lot of things you can do. So like that sound in the intro, um, I've set it so that it morphs the gain up a little bit and also the delay mix and it only does it as long as I've got my foot on the button. By doing this you get this cool bloom kind of sound when you're holding down the button. So my first layer of sound sounds like this. Second layer sounds like this. But then you can punch in certain notes like you get this cool swell sort of bloom sound which I think is really cool and I'll show you how to set this up in a minute. Another use is just a simple solo boost so you don't want to be flicking between presets all the time you can do this with one button. So this one I've set up, it boosts the gain a little bit, the volume a bit, the mid range a little bit, and adds a bit of delay. And that's all done with one button press. So my basic sound. And then solo boost. So in context. So it can be as simple as that or it can be really complex like this patch I've created which messes with all kinds of levels when I morph and it lets me create a pad underneath when the button's depressed and then when I release it I can play over the top of it and I'll explain the setup of this kind of thing later on in the video. <laughs>
when I was coming up with patches to demonstrate this stuff today, I came up with this quite cool idea of morphing into a small AM radio, small amp kind of thing, an effect they use quite a lot in sort of rock and metal, and then it can kick back into your full sound to give it more impact. <laughs> You can set it up as well so it just punches a single note in a phrase. So this way I've got it morphing in momentary mode and it brings up delay level and I think it adds a shaper and a phaser uh, and it sounds a little bit like this. set up to morph in the Kemper? Well, pretty much any continuous controller, so like any of the virtual knobs, tee -hee, any of the virtual knobs within uh, the Kemper, there's a few exceptions. I don't think you can mess with the cab block settings. Um, so anything that you can control using the knobs on the front of the Kemper and within effects can be morphed. You can't do any hard buttons and you can't bypass, but there's a workaround for bypassing. Most of the effects, even the drive section on the Kemper has got a mix control. So you can just set it to zero to essentially bypass it and then set your desired effects level on the morphed sound if that's something you want to do. So how do you go about setting this up? Well, I'm gonna to attempt to show you, it's gonna be quite awkward, but I'm gonna get the camera down on the Kemper and uh, try and show you in real time how to set this up. So we're down here at the Kemper now. I hope the angle's all right. It's very difficult to get everything in and still be able to demonstrate it. I've also tried to get rid of the flickering from the Kemper screen and the LEDs on the camera. Um, right, so morphing. So for an example of how to set this up, let's pick an amp. Got a Bogner Gold member there. Uh, and say, for example, you want to be able to morph the gain control like I did for the clip in the intro. It's literally as simple as Pressing the button on the foot switch, you're now on the top LED, so you're now morphed. So let's say we want to increase the gain. So we increase the gain, and then when we press the button to go back to the first LED. So as you can see there, it's got a predetermined amount of time that it takes to go from one sound to the other. And to change that, you press the rig button. Uh, I'm already on it, but you scroll along until you find morph. And then you have a rise time and a fall time. So the rise time is how long it takes to get up to the, se uh, the second sound. And the fall time is how long it takes to get back. So you can predetermine those. At the moment, because this preset is uh, to tap tempo, you determine the amount by the note value. So for example, if we go to a quarter note and a quarter note, then the time will be a quarter note to whatever the tempo is that you've set. So another feature that's very cool is, I think this only came in in version 7.0 firmware, but I might be wrong, is up here you can see it says momentary. So if you select that, when you morph, it will only morph as long as your foot is on the button, and then when you release it, it will return. So that's very cool if you just wanna accent certain parts. So you can morph any of the amp settings that are available, but what's really fun is when you get into effects. So here, for example, I've got my delay. The mix on the unmorphed sound is around 30. If I press the morph button now and increase it up to 60, ish <laughs> uh, that will now if you look the mix will now change as the sound morphed so when morphing things like delays and reverbs a very cool thing to do this button up here which now says mix which is post i think that's default if you set it to pre when you morph your delays will be louder when you morph back, the things that you played with the louder mix will carry on at that volume 
over the top of your new delay setting. So that's very cool for making like pad type sounds. Um, and I mean, there's no limit to the amount of things that you can morph. You can have your delay level come up and your reverb level go down, or you know, you can go from clean to dirty, any number of things. It's pretty limitless. Another very quick addendum. If you've set a control to morph and you don't want it to morph anymore, all you have to do is on the bass sound, turn the knob past where it's set to morph and it will disappear. Cool, he's still here, right? Well, I think that deserves a drink, so cheers. <laughs> right, so hopefully, after hearing some of these sounds, if your brain's anything like mine, complete nerd when it comes to this stuff, you might be starting to think out some of the possibilities with this. And like I said, it can be as simple as just bringing up a solo level. It hasn't got to be anything crazy. Um, but I hope you can hear that there's plenty of practical uses for this and some absolutely mental ones as well. So I just want to quickly show you a bank of sounds that I have set up for gigs. It's a very simple clean to lead thing. Uh, and I use it quite a lot, I would say, when I'm gigging, but I'm not at the moment due to this pandemic bollocks. Um, but it, I think it'd be a good idea just to show off a more practical use for this for any of the live players out there. I use morphing on every single one of these presets. And again, like I said in the last video, these are set up for live. So the EQ and the effects levels are set up for that purpose. So it might not come across great on, on this recording, but we'll see. So this is my basic clean sound in the bank. <laughs> And then it brings in chorus delay and reverb. Next up, we've got a cranked sort of combo sound. And then this adds a load of delay and reverb for more spacey textures. Then I've got my sort of crunch sound. And this one adds um, more, more gain, I think, and brings in the compressor mix, so it's good for getting feedback. Uh, and then I've got a scoop sound that I use for sitting back in the mix. This adds on uh, delay and reverb again for more textural parts. And on my lead sound, I think it just adds some delay and reverb, it might increase the gain a little bit. Right then, I think that about covers more things for now. Um, I hope it's been in depth enough, but not boring, uh, and you've had a, you've gained something from watching it. Um, if there's any more kind of tip or tutorial videos that you you want to see, then let me know. I'll do my very best. Um, again, with all these things, make sure it's of use to you. Don't go into morphing and things because you feel like you should. If you're not missing it, don't worry about it. And also dialing in profiles, I've had a lot of questions about how I dial in profiles and I will go into it a bit, but at the end of the day it's up to your ears and if it sounds good to you then it is good. So please like and subscribe if you haven't already uh, and I really look forward to seeing you in another video. Hopefully it will be slightly less hot outside and I won't be sweating out of places I didn't know I had in here under the video lights. Anyway, take care of yourselves guys and I'll see you again. Cheers. Uh, just before we get started I want to say a big sh uh, shit. Big shit. <laughs>